This is me reviewing day one of my U-turns. The worst thing I ever saw! And this is me reviewing day 90. Oh my, is that me? Look how tight. I bought my dream bike, and it's been the perfect bike across thousands of miles of road trips. But it's kind of big, and it hasn't exactly been easy to handle. So in the 30-day challenge, I went back to the basics and got refresher training from my old sensei, Jerry Palladino. Training with Jerry! Jerry had 25 years of riding experience before completing the 120-hour training to become a motor instructor. He modified the drills from the police training and has been teaching civilians since 1999. Remember, we're going to use three techniques, head and eyes, friction zone, little pressure on the rear brake. Got to get that head and eyes around as quickly as possible. In the 30-day challenge, I increased my speed and accuracy in both the 20-foot circle and the 18 by 50-foot figure eight. I went from not being able to do a figure eight at all to being able to stay within the cones about 90% of the time. Since completing my 100 U-turns a day for 30 days, I went on a cross-country trip filming a 12-part video series. I was gone for six weeks, and I didn't practice my U-turns in all that time. And when it got time to restart for this 90-day challenge, it was like I was back to square one. So I had a plan to start out with a strong refresher. So I am on my way home, on my cross country trip, passing through Tucson, Arizona, and I have a special guest to help me today with the U-turns. It's Dan Dan the Fireman! Hey everybody. Thank you so much for helping me today. Oh, you're Dan. welcome. So that one legged circle thing that you do, yeah. how likely do you think that I can do that? You could definitely, you could definitely do it. It's all counterbalance. Um, I'll show you how to do that. You're a quick learner, I've seen it. <gasps> yeah. We'll just do some U-turns. Okay. We gonna do here. Lefty Lucy or righty tighty. So okay. you got three U-turns in one thing. All right. All right, I'm ready. Whoa. I want to look like that. Woo. How long is this going to take? One thing that I see a lot of people do is that they just do that. What I like to do is when I turn left, I also rotate. It's those three things. Okay. It's that head, it's a little bit of that weight transfer, and then it's the handlebars. If you feel like you're gonna fall over, put a little bit more weight. There you go. I feel like I got the secret to a magic trick. Gotta keep practicing it. It is a perishable skill. Okay. But you, you know the concept now. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dan. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Managing a large bike isn't about your size. It's about technique. Sure, I dropped the bike a lot. I couldn't always lift it, and my feet barely touched the ground. But unlike the people that think I should just get something smaller, I believe in rising to what you want instead of downgrading what you don't want. Hey, hey, up here. I'm just letting my clutch cool right now. Jerry said I think to do it every five to eight minutes. So I'm just, I just tied the clutch and uh, letting it cool. Okay, um, is it just me or am I doing like near perfect U-turns? I, I know I got out of the cones a couple times, but I'm halfway through. 25 figure eights. I feel like I'm already back to where I was towards the end of the 30 day challenge before I had my big gap of not practicing. I wish coach was here so he could tell me if I was in the cones, but I'll just look at the footage later. But I feel like, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. So I know a lot of the comments in the 30 day challenge of this said, shouldn't you already be able to do this? in US to pass the test? Yes, but they're not super strict about your speed, your body positioning, how graceful you look. So I don't want to just pass. I want to be able to do this with no fear, have so much finesse and grace that I could do this at any speed I want. I could do it without rear brake if I wanted to. I could do it without clutch if I wanted to. I could do it one-legged and standing if I wanted to. So let's keep doing them. Houston, we have a problem. On one of my drops during the 100 bike lifts a day for 30 days challenge, 
my rear brake lever bent. It keeps happening where it needs to be re-bent or it just doesn't work. For now, I'm gonna practice these U-turns and I bent it back so it's working right now, but hopefully it doesn't just stop working all of a sudden. But I guess this is what Moto Jitsu has been talking about, how <laughs> what happens if you lose one of your tools, like your rear brake, do you still know how to do your U-turns? <laughs> you only rely on the rear brake and you only do that. When I take the tool away from you, it's like, ah, oh, I need my tool. I, I needed my blankie. So I took away the blankie so to force you to rely on what's the foundational stuff, which is this clutch and throttle. So I'm bringing the cones a little bit further in. They're at 18 feet. Previously, they were, at, I think, at like maybe 19 or 20 feet wide. And I'm doing that because the motor police course U-turns are set at 18 feet wide. Jerry's course is set at 24 feet wide. So I want to get really good at 18 feet wide because I want to train with motor police officers. I've never seen anyone do it before as far as motor vloggers go, but I can't be bad at this. I'm trying to do it one-legged like Dan and the Fireman Moto Jitsu do. It feels really cool. I don't think I, I look as good as they do when they do it. Maybe closer to day 90 I will. Rectangular formation kept freaking me out, so I'm just put it in the cone in circles now. Rear brake lever has not arrived, so I'm gonna keep practicing without it, and it really freaks me out, so I'm gonna do circles again today. Have them set at 18 feet wide, and then the other cones are two feet apart, so 18 feet wide with a 24 foot wide grace thing. Looks like I might be driving to Adam Sandoval's Great American Convoy stop. Since my rear brake is shot, I don't think I should ride it 400 miles. So that kind of sucks. So I've got my circle spaced at 20 feet apart and I have less cones, so hopefully that'll keep me from freaking out and being the color within the lines. All right, looks like I'm finally coloring within the lines. But I'm not counterweighting, I noticed when I reviewed the footage. I'm leaning a lot more, but still not counterweighting, even though I feel like I am. So I'm going to try to focus on that. Moto Jitsu said, I want you to feel like you're putting your bike on the ground. So we'll see how that goes. I have crash guards for a reason. Pause a second. At the start of this challenge, I couldn't lift my bike. But since doing the 100 bike lift challenge, now I can. In case you haven't noticed, the theme of this channel is never give up. I'm stronger than I knew! So this is how I screwed up my rear brake lever last time. It looks like it took a hit, but I think it's still working. So we're just gonna keep going. By the way, if you have like an 800 pound Harley, you do not want to do what I just did, putting my foot out to try to save the bike. Like, you'll break your leg. I don't know why I was doing that. On a bagger, if you feel like you're going to tip over while making a U-turn, use a quick dab. Put your foot down and get it back up very quickly. Otherwise, since the bike is moving, you can get your foot caught under the bags or the muffler, and it's probably going to break your ankle. Although I was still trying to get a police department to let me train with them, I wanted to be prepared if a department finally said yes. I had to make sure what I was practicing was actually going to help me not make a fool of myself in front of them. So, I asked Jerry, knowing his background as a retired motor police instructor, what did I need to do to make sure I could do this? I said if you just went to a parking lot that's got, you know, double spaces, 18 by 36, if you could do that, you can do any, any of the uh, courses on the motor officer. Okay. I'm going to slowly make the circles smaller and smaller. I've been doing them at 22 feet, so today this is at 21 feet. I'm just letting the clutch cool for a little bit. So it looks like today I'm already able to do the 18 by 36 figure eight with rear brake. So the trick will be, can I do it on a Harley? A big Harley, like what the motor police officers use. Look! The white one came in! 
I'm so excited. It's the brake free helmet light. It, it lights up wire free when you stop or slow down. What's that light on the back of your helmet is one of my most frequently asked questions. Since one of the top reasons for motorcycle accidents is failure to see a rider, I wear a bright helmet, gear, and that light. A couple of 20-something engineer riders designed it. They were even on Shark Tank. It's come with me through coastal flood warnings, dust storms, high wind advisories, and it's still going strong. I've been wearing it for a couple of years now, over about 10,000 miles before asking them to sponsor this channel. Now it comes in white in addition to the black, and I'll link to it below with a discount code for you. Okay, no one asked me about this, but it needs to be talked about. Make sure you have shatterproof glasses under your helmet. These are perfect for motorcyclists because it's so comfy in your helmet. I've got a discount code for you for these below. And yes, they come in prescription and polarized and non-polarized versions. Okay, so now we're gonna do 19 feet circles. Uh, it's all in my head. Cause I think I could do it. I'm pretty sure I did it in the intersection. So we'll see. By day 60, I was already leaning a lot more, even doing some of the circles one-legged looking much better than I was when I did it with Dan Dan the Fireman. And I started adding 18 foot circles at the end of my figure eights. Maybe that's unnecessary, but. But playing with your bike is the best way to intimately know it. So let's play. <laughs> Not bad. You wanna hear my uh, 2080 rule about what? courses? What? Formal courses, which I advocate nonstop, huh? that's 20%. You have a cup. You take this course, here's a bunch of knowledge. If you don't do anything with that and drink and digest it, which means practice, that water's irrelevant. What do you do with that information when you leave the course? And riding is different than practicing. So I asked my old jujitsu instructor, a retired master sergeant in the special forces, who first taught me this concept in martial arts, and asked him if adrenaline had something to do with my freezing when it came time to do a U-turn in a real world scenario. It really triggers what everybody is more familiar with as the fight or flight syndrome. And that fight or flight syndrome can also involve fight, flight, or freeze, where people become paralyzed from this adrenaline dump into their bloodstream. So one of the things we want to do is make sure that we get people used to managing this adrenaline in their system so that they don't freeze. And then the more comfortable they become with the, the effects of the drug, the better they're able to perform under these stressful situations, especially for self-defense and, and other activities that would be required uh, for military operations. So today I'm all loaded up. I'm not going on a trip, but I'm trying to recreate the weight of my bags on my cross country trip. I found that when I was on the cross country trip, even though I had just completed 3000 U-turns, this challenge in 30 days, once I was all loaded up and on the road, it was like I had real world freeze and I never tried any U-turns. I was afraid basically. So that's what I'm trying to recreate by now practicing these U-turns with these bags on and then I'm going to try practicing these U-turns in the middle of the road. My driveway is another thing I've kind of always had a little bit of fear over. It's super uneven. There's a lot of debris. I don't know, it just freaks me out. In theory, I can do it. It's definitely wider than 18 feet and I've been doing 18 feet circles and U-turns in on the perfect parking lot. This will be my adrenaline inoculation for tight circles. Let's see how it goes. Now don't start saying Doodle told you to train like the special forces and going crazy. Adrenaline inoculation can go wrong. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times people only understand the superficial aspects of adrenaline inoculation training, and they don't fully understand how to take people through the process. Frequently, they kind of actually, they apply too much too soon, which causes a negative impact and actually causes like a mild form of 
you know, a PTSD or, or a traumatic stress syndrome to where people don't want to train anymore. I did it! 100 users for 90 days! And then finally, it was test day. So sure, I've come a long way, but I'm no motor police officer. Although it would be really cool to see what it's like to train like them. I mean, really see. And I think I may have a plan. Oh my gosh. If you think doing 100 U-turns a day for 90 days was crazy, check out my other way I try to prepare for training with motor police officers. 100 bike lifts a day for 30 days right over here. See you in the next one.